Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good. So today I am here with Fractions Class 6 Maths. I am Roshni from Lano Hub, the free learning platform where you get to study maths and science absolutely for free at learnohub.com. And we upload one new video every day. So stay tuned and be with us. Now what exactly do you think are we going to study in fractions? Well, we have learned about a lot of numbers. We have learned about whole numbers. We have learned about natural numbers. So we basically talk about numbers like 1, 2, 3, 56, 55, 100. So these numbers fall under the category of whole numbers. So what are fractions then? Let us look at some scenarios. For example, let's say that you have a muffin and you and your friend equally share the muffin. Okay. Now, if I ask you, how many muffins did you have? So what will you say? One muffin? No, because you did not have the entire muffin. So how much of it did you have? So you had half of it. So what is half? One by two, right? Let's say that it's pizza tonight. So mama made pizza for everyone in the house. And there are total five slices in the pizza. You ate two slices out of those five slices. So if I ask you, how much of the pizza did you eat? So what would be your answer? Two slices out of five slices. That means two fifth of the pizza. So what are these numbers? Whether it is one by two or two by five, these are what we are going to study under fractions. Yes. So fractions are very, very useful when it comes to our day to day life. So let us get excited and learn more about fractions. So are we all ready? Let's get started. Let's say that there are four kids in your house and you have a total of two muffins. Now, since you have four kids and you want to distribute these two muffins amongst them, so what would you do? Will it be nice if you just give one one muffin to two of them and do not give anything to the rest of the two? That would not look nice. So what should you do? You should do something such that each one of them gets equal amount of muffin. So what would you do? You would divide each muffin into half and you would give half muffin to each of them. So how much of the muffin did each of them get? What fraction of the muffin did they get? They get one by two. That means if you divide the muffin into two equal parts, so one part out of those two equal parts has been received by each child. So you see here it was the total muffin which was divided into two equal parts like one and two. So one part out of the two equal parts is half. And this half is nothing but an example of a fraction. So now even before we start talking about or if we start before we define fractions, let us quickly look at the different types of numbers which already existed before fractions. Natural numbers, those numbers which come very naturally to us. For example, you ask a three year old kid to count. So how does that child count? The child starts counting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on. So all these numbers starting from 1 till infinity, they all are called natural numbers because they come naturally to us. The second type of number are the whole numbers. And whole numbers are nothing but 0, 1, 2, 3 till infinity. So basically all natural numbers along with 0 are called whole numbers. Then we have integers. So integers are basically all the whole numbers that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till infinity plus the negative numbers. So all the positive numbers, negative numbers plus 0. So all of these together come under integers. So these are the three types of numbers which already existed, which we already know about them. Now the question is, why fractions? Why do we even need fractions? Do we need them? Of course we need them, that is why they exist. So that we can conveniently express how much of a pizza did we eat. Yes, pizza is one of the very good examples to understand fractions. Now, as I told you that when you eat one slice of a pizza, how much did you eat? You need some
some number which can very clearly describe that fact or express that fact. So if you say that I ate one fifth of a pizza, that means that if the pizza is divided into five equal slices, then you ate one slice of that pizza. Or if you, whether you ate one complete pizza or you ate one and a half pizza, that is one complete pizza plus half of another pizza. So that would be one and a half. So one, one and a half is an example of fraction. One fifth is an example of fraction. Four by five, that means you ate four slices out of five slices of the pizza. So four by five is an example of a fraction. So these are all examples of fractions and in order to describe such scenario, we do need numbers like fractions. So now let us see what are fractions. So these are numbers representing part of a whole. So whenever we want to express something like out of the total, how much out of the total? So then we need fractions. So let us look at examples. So 1 by 6 is an example of a fraction. Now whenever you look at any fraction, you would see that the fraction has a number divided by another number. So the number that is there on the top is called the numerator and the number which is down is the denominator. So one good way to remember which one is numerator and which one is denominator is D for down, D for denominator. So the one which is down is the denominator. So obviously the other one which is on the up is the numerator. So the upper number is numerator and the lower number is denominator. So how do we read this 1 by 6? So this is read as 1 by 6 or you can also read it as 1 sixth. So when you say that 1 by 6 of the book has been read by me, that means if there are, uh, let's say, 100 pages in the book, so 1 sixth of 100 is already read by you. So that is an example of a fraction. Similarly, when you look at 9 by 14, it is it can be called as or it can be read as 9 14. Here 9 is the numerator and 14 is the denominator. This is 267 by 9808. So this is also an example of a fraction. Look at this one, 11 by 6. This is also a fraction. Now it is not always necessary that the numerator is smaller than the denominator. The numerator can be smaller, the numerator can be bigger. So any number in this format where you have where you have a number in the form of a by b such that both a such that a is so any number in the form a by b such that b is not equal to 0, b is not equal to 1. So this is a condition which needs to be fulfilled. So a and b could be any whole number but b should not be equal to 0 because anything divided by 0 is um, not known. Similarly anything divided by 1 would be a whole number but fraction is not a whole number. Fraction always represents part of a whole. So if you have a number like this, 51 divided by 1, is it a fraction? No, this is not a fraction because the denominator is 1. 51 by 1 is the same as 51 and 51 is a whole number. A fraction is not a whole number. Fraction is part of a whole number. But in if, in, if you have something like 51 by 2, so that is a fraction. Or if you have 2 by 51, that is again a fraction. So fraction it can also be defined as a ratio of two integers in the form p by q such that q is not equal to 0, q is not equal to 1 as I mentioned just now. So this, this is about fraction. So I think with these definitions in mind, you will be able to distinguish which one is a fraction and which one is not. So let us look at some examples. 9 by 3. Do you think this is a fraction? So it is in the form of a number in the ratio like p by q form okay but is it a fraction not really this is not a fraction why you know because 9 by 3 what is 9 by 3 9 by 3 is nothing but 3 because 3 into 3 is 9 and what is 3 3 is actually in the form of 3 by 1 so 3 by 1 is a whole number and not a fraction let us look at the next example, 6 by 15. Now in 6 by 15, we see that it satisfies all the condition to become a fraction. So this is a fraction. Next one is 0. So do you think 0 is a fraction? No, that's because this is a whole number. 0 is a whole number and fractions are not whole. They are part of whole. 25 by 2. 
This is again a fraction because it is in the form of p by q such that q is neither equal to 0 nor 1. 51. So 51 again is not a fraction because this is a whole number. 51 is basically 51 by 1. So it doesn't satisfy the condition to become a fraction and it is not a fraction. Now let us look at some more examples of fraction. You ate, you took a bite of an apple. So did you eat the entire apple? No, you just ate some part of that complete apple. So this is an example of fraction because you ate some part of the whole. So it is a part of the whole. So therefore it is a fraction. Let's say you are studying and you could complete some portion of the entire book. That means you did not complete the entire book. You did not complete the whole book. You completed a part of the whole book. So a part of a whole would be a fraction. Let's say that you play for some portion of the entire day. That means you do not play for the whole day, but some part of the whole day. So some part of a whole is again a fraction. So whenever you come across any such scenario in a real life where you talk about something which is part of a whole, you are basically talking about fraction. Now let us look at these pictures and decide what fraction of the picture is shaded. So in the first example you see, in the first example you see a, a circle and you see that it has been divided into four parts but not all the four parts is shaded. Let's say this is one, two, three and four. So these are the four parts into which th this entire circle is divided. And do you think that all of all the four parts are shaded? No, only one part, part is shaded. That means one part out of the four parts is shaded. So we can say that one fourth of the circle is shaded. Let us look at the next one. In the next image, we see that it is an arrangement of many squares. Many squares. So how many squares do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So total we have seven squares. So total number of squares is 7. How many shaded squares do we have? How many of these are shaded? 1, 2 and 3. So only 3 of them are shaded. So if I ask you what fraction of this entire figure is shaded, so what would you say? 3 out of 7 squares are shaded. So 3 seventh of this picture is shaded. Let's look at more examples. The first one, here you see a lot of flowers. How many total flowers do you see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So total number of flowers is 12. And how many of them are shaded? So the first three are shaded. So only three flowers out of 12 flowers are shaded. So 3 12th of the picture is shaded. Or 3 12th can also be written as 1 4th because 3 4 is a 12th. So this can be very well written as 1 4th. So 1 4th of the picture is shaded. Let's look at the next one. So here you see uh, too many, how many objects do you see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And how many of them are shaded? Now if, if you consider them shaded, all of them look shaded. So total how many do you have? You have a total of 10 and how many shaded do you have? All of them are shaded. So therefore 10 by 10 are shaded. That means all of them are shaded. So the whole picture is shaded in this case. So based on whatever we learned about fraction, in fact, we got a basic idea about fraction. So let's look at few questions. Question number one, what fraction of a day is eight hours? Now, how many hours exist in a day? So one day has 24 hours. So what fraction of one day is 8 hours? That means 8 hours out of 24 hours. So 8 by 24, 8, 3 is a 24. So this is 1 by 3. So one third of the day is 8 hours. Question number 2. Kanchan dyes dresses. She had to dye 30 dresses. She has so far finished 20 dresses. What fraction of dresses has she finished? So how many has she finished? So the number of dresses that she has already finished dyeing is 20. And how many total number of dresses does she have? She has 30. So therefore, what fraction of the dresses has she already dyed? So the fraction of dresses she has already dyed is 20 out of 30. 
because she has dyed 20 dresses out of a total of 30. So 20 by 30, so this 10 to the 20, 10 to the 30, so this is 2 by 3. So we can say that two third of the dresses has already been finished. Question number three, write the natural numbers from two to 12. So let's start writing the natural numbers. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11 and 12. What fraction of them are prime numbers? So first let us uh, mark the prime numbers. So two is a prime number. 3 is also a prime number, 4 is not a prime number, 5 is again a prime number, 7 is a prime number, 11 is a prime number. So these are the prime numbers. Now just a quick recap, I hope you remember what is a prime number. Any such number whose, which has only two factors, that is 1 and itself. That means for example 2, 2 has only two factors, 1 and 2. Similarly 3 has only two factors, 1 and 3. But when you look at 4, 4 has three factors, 1, 2 and 4. So besides 1 and 4, it also has some other factors. So therefore, 4 is not a prime number. So any number which has only two factors, 1 and itself is a prime number. So here these are the prime numbers. So therefore, how many prime numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5 prime numbers. And total, how many numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Therefore, what fraction of the total numbers are prime? 5 out of 11 numbers are prime. So, 5 by 11 is the fraction of prime numbers. Question number 4. Kristen received a CD player for her birthday. She bought 3 CDs and received 5 others as gift. What fraction of her total CDs did she buy and what fraction did she receive as gifts? Okay, so first of all, we have to find out how many total CDs does Kristen have. So total CDs that she has is 3 plus 5. 3 she bought and 5 she received as gift. So therefore, she has a total of 8 CDs. So what fraction of the CDs she bought? So fraction she bought. That means how many CDs out of the total number of CDs did she buy? So she bought 3 CDs, 3 out of 8 is being bought by her. So 3 eighths of the CDs are the ones which she bought. Now what about the fraction which she received as gift? So how many did she receive as gift? 5. So 5 out of 8 CDs she received as gift. So these are the fraction of CDs which she bought and which she received as gifts. Question number 5. Identify the error if any. This is 1 by 2. So do you think this is 1 by 2? No, not really. That's because whenever we say 1 by 2, we mean one part out of two parts where all the parts are equal. Only then we can say, right, that one part out of two parts. But in this case, you see, these are not equal parts. So if you really want to divide, I mean, if you really want to show 1 by 2 in the same diagram, you need to divide it in this fashion. So in this case, each of these parts would be 1 by 2 because both are equal parts. So this would definitely be 1 by 2. In this case, this is 1 by 4. Do you think this is 1 by 4? Because it definitely divides it into 4 parts. This, but these 4 parts are not 4 equal parts. Therefore, this is not 1 by 4. If you really want to see how would how can we denote 1 by 4, we, can, we could have divided this rectangle in this fashion such that each of these parts would have been 1 by 4. The third one, this is 3 by 4. The shaded portion is 3 parts, but all the 4 parts are not equal. So we cannot call it as 3 by 4. So let us actually denote 3 by 4. So in that case, we will have to divide it into equal halves. And then this 3 parts out of 4 parts would be 3 by 4. So in this case, this shaded region would be 3 by 4. Question number 6. What fraction of the image is shaded? So let us, so let us look at the first image which is a flower. So what fraction of this image do you think is shaded? Shaded means how many of these are colored in blue? So let's first count the total number of petals. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight. So total number of petals is eight. And how many shaded petals do you have? That is how many blue petals do you have? You have one, two, three and four. So four of them are shaded. So what fraction of them are shaded? Four out of eight petals are shaded. So four to the eight, which is nothing but one by two. So one by two or half of the petals are shaded. Let's look at the second one. Here you see that it is a kind of a butterfly where you see half of the butterfly is shaded. You see, this is a circle, half of the circle is shaded. Again, when you look at this shape, half of the shape is shaded. Two of the wings are shaded and two of them are not shaded. So we can, by looking at this, we can say that half of the image is shaded. So now that we have got a fair idea about what are fractions, where are these fractions located on the number line? Because when we look at the number line, we see the whole numbers from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. We also see the integers, that is the negative numbers are also there, positive numbers. So the integers are well placed on the number line. But what about the fractions? Do We don't see a fraction out here. So are the fractions hidden somewhere? Well, fractions are also present here. Fractions are also present in between these integers. Now, how do we locate these fractions? That is something which we are going to learn in this section. So let us take an example of a very simple fraction that is 1 by 3 and try to locate it on a number line. Okay, so what is the meaning of 1 by 3? It means 1 part out of 3 equal parts. So let's say this is the number line. So this is a magnified version of the number line. So I'm not showing the entire number line. Instead, I'm just showing the central part of the number line, a little magnified so that it becomes easier for us to understand. Now, the technique that you need to follow to locate a fraction on a number line is observe the denominator. So focus on the denominator. So what is the denominator here? You have 1 by 3. So denominator is 3. So what do we do? We are going to divide each block into three equal parts. Each block means each section. That is each part between two integers like 0 to 1 is one block. 1 to 2 is another block, 2 to 3 is another block, 0 to minus 1 is one block, minus 1 to minus 2 is another block. So this each of these compartment is like one block. So we are going to divide this block into three equal parts because 3 is the denominator in this case. So let us try to divide it into three equal parts like 1, 2 and 3. So we have divided it into three equal parts. Perfect. Now. Once I have divided this into three equal parts, what does that mean? How much is this portion? How much is this much? This is one part out of three equal parts because this is one, two and three. So these are the three equal parts. And this is one part out of three equal parts. So basically this point is one by three. So what would be this point when measured from zero? So this would actually be two parts out of three equal parts so this would be two by three similarly what would be this point this would be nothing but three by three and three by three is nothing but one similarly if, if you continue this marking even further so this becomes four by three this becomes five by three this becomes six by three so six by three is nothing but two so this is how we are locating the fractions now the main concept here is you will have to observe the denominator. So once you have observed the denominator, that means you want to locate one part out of three equal parts. So that means you need to divide something into three equal parts. So what is that something? That something is nothing but each block. So we divide each block into three equal parts and that is how we locate fractions. So let us take another example. So this time let us try to locate 10 by 8 on the number line. So let us look at the number line. This is how it is. 10 by 8. So what is the denominator? Denominator is 8. So in 10 by 8, 8 is the denominator. So we are going to divide each block into 8 equal parts. So this is each block. So you divide into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So this is how you have divided it into 8 equal parts. So this means this would be 1 by 8. This is 2 by 8, 3 by 8. 4 by 8, 5 by 8, 6 by 8, 7 by 8, this is 8 by 8 which is nothing but 1, 
Now, if you continue this further, you would get 9 by 8, 10 by 8, 11 by 8, 12 by 8 and so on. So, which is that fraction which we wanted to locate? We wanted to locate 10 by 8. So, 10 by 8 lies here. So, 10 by 8 is the fraction that lies somewhere between the integers 1 and 2. So, in this fashion, we locate fractions on a number line. So, just locate, find the denominator, divide each block into those many pa equal parts and then you start numbering. And that's how you find the required fraction on the number line. So, let us try to represent a few more fractions on the number line. So, let's take for example 3 by 5. So, how do you think that you will represent 3 by 5? So, as I always say that focus on the denominator and the denominator here is 5. That means we need to divide one block or one unit into 5 equal parts. So, this is one unit. So, we will divide it into 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 equal parts. So, this the first part would be 1 by 5. 1 by 5 because this is 1 part out of 5 equal parts. This would be 2 by 5, this would be 3 by 5, this would be 4 by 5, this 1 is actually 5 by 5 and so on. So we had to locate 3 by 5. So 3 by 5 is this point. Pretty simple, right? Let's take the next example, 3 by 7. So what is the denominator here? It's 7. So again the same thing but this time we will divide it into 7 equal parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So this is 1 by 7, 2 by 7, 3 by 7, 4 by 7, 5 by 7, 6 by 7 and 7 by 7. So where is 3 by 7? 3 by 7 is somewhere here. Let's take one last example. This is 4 by 3. So the denominator is 3. So we will divide each block into 3 equal parts like this. 4 by 3, so this is 1 by 3, 2 by 3, this is 3 by 3, this is 4 by 3, this is 5 by 3, so this is 4 by 3, so this is where 4 by 3 is located on the number line. I hope you found the video useful and if you really understood the concept well, do write in the comment section that concept who are crystal clear. And I will see you all very soon with a new topic and a new video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.